there have been a lot of new people showing up in the DCC community. And that means someone's got to judge some DCC adventures. These games are not going to run themselves. Well, we heard you, Forentic Ones. You want some tips on running DCC provided by some old hands and also some one-time newbies who've been through those struggles. We've got you covered with an all-star cast of judges to share their DCC hacks, pro tips, and of course, a little general judge splaining. I'm Judge Julian, and here's my partner in chaos, Judge Jen. Good evening, everyone. Well, hello. And if you're like me, and I know at least you're this much like me, you were at Gary Khan just like three days. When did you get back home, actually? Um, like five minutes ago? Some undisclosed time, possibly prior to uh, Wednesday, the um, <clears throat> 29th. Possibly right. prior to that, yeah. Okay, well, you <laughs> look pretty fresh and rested, so that's good. You look recovered and hale and hearty. Yeah. <laughs> good, good for you. Well, it was, is it, there was a little COVID flying around, but did you feel, did it, did you feel like it was kind of like the old days? Like it was kind it of was, like an old con. It was kind of like the old days with, um and you can probably feel it in my voice good old Colin Crud. Um, yeah but yeah. hey all, all the tests for at least in our house are negative I have heard of a lot of uh not negative tests but the majority of those seem to be from the people who were playing the games and that sounds horrible but you were also just sitting in a space next to somebody for four full hours as opposed to you know just well, dealing with 400 people i'm trying to record now, right? right now so i can't talk to right. you <clears throat> right no it's Did you find it, a resolution? it was unfortunate but um i i think uh you know people muscled through that hopefully nobody got too sick and i of course got exactly the regular the old that's one reason it felt like an old con i got the old con crud test negative yay but i mean ish crud right? positive uh, yeah actually but, not as bad as as other times probably so i mean going back to your question of did it feel like the old days kind of but it was both bigger and a little bit more um some people seemed a little bit more careful if that makes sense i i tried to mask during when i was running games and stuff and uh did you get to actually play any games no, but I immersed myself in the community and spent my downtime with friends to kind of make up for all of that. I I do kind of regret not running one thing, but on the other hand, I got a nap. So, you know, when you get old, you make these choices. Yeah, as you get older, sometimes you would you need to recharge the cosmic batteries and uh yes yeah that that is what it's like as i get older my con experience has has had big noisy ups and also nice little quiet downs and right. um it's had continued to have adult beverages but it's also had coffee and lemonade <laughs> and uh propel and other things like that so i um, do believe yeah. i forgot breakfast like most days yeah, well, we were having fun. Hmm. So I hope, there. I hope though, I'm sorry that I didn't get to give Grape Ape my favorite Goodman Twitch personality, hardly any, like more than 15 seconds of a hug or something in a top secret um, thing. But um, <laughs> that was, that was fun. And I, I yeah, so Matt, we got to get together next time. So anyway, enough Gary Khan wrap up. Uh, it that was, was quick. <laughs> yeah well it, do you want to cover anything else do you uh oh i was going to ask you oh. how many bookstores did you visit on the way back uh just one because we had some other errands as well jen was t or somebody was telling me that you guys commonly stop and look for the scour the appendix and shelves at some yes. of the used bookstores yes. since our booths sell our original you know appendix and literature which i love so and of course that's i i go deep i came back with a lot of that stuff as well as some obviously some new stuff so um i'm glad you enjoyed oh, it very is much. probably our favorite like date night thing oh yeah that's excellent excellent 
All right. So, well, go team like bar. <laughs> yeah. I was, a, it was for whatever reason, it was a Philip Jose Farmer uh, book haul for me this time, but who knows? Nice. Thank you for taking those. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, somebody's got to do it. These books aren't going to read themselves. So, hey, nice, nice way to get back on track there. You got it. So let's we, do it. Yeah, we have some judges and you're getting really tired of listening to us talk about Gary Kahn and uh, Aftermath. So we got some great judges. <laughs> We're going to jump right into that in about one minute or less. Tell me now what could it be that calls us so incessantly. All right, welcome back to Spellburn. And we have with us two of our uh, greatest and well-known, best known, I should say, celebrity judges, Judge Daniel Joseph Bishop and Judge DJ LaBoss, aka Brendan LaSalle. So uh, I wanted to invite these guys. We, we have all heard, I think, that there have been a lot of new players, new judges, new people coming into DCC. There's been a lot of action since around, oh, sometime in December about people checking out new games, uh, kicking the tires on different games, trying new stuff, and they want to learn about it. And I figured, you know, obviously, if you want to try a new game, there's got to be somebody to run it. That person has to get a book. He has to, or she, they have to get a book. They have to run the game. They have to get some extra funky dice, maybe. Well, you can hack that. But um, it can be challenging to do all the judging, to learn those rules. And I figured let's let's go through that, break down those barriers, um, and you know, start talking with some old, uh, some <clears throat> older judge, some veteran judges about you old know, is true. <laughs> well, <laughs> either it's, his words, not mine. <laughs> it's it's true here accurate. too. Yeah. It's, it, they're really, for me, they're, I consider them AARPGs, but um, that's a whole nother story. Oh, so, snap. Oh, yeah. oh. All right. All right. I'll All right. That. I'll that. I'll that. Well, you know, <laughs> so uh, so I thought for, because many of our newbies might be our age and having our experience and wanting to check it out. So I talk about transitioning. You know, I, I don't know what you guys were, were you already on the OSR or were you, I know, Brendan, you were still playing some three, five-ish Pathfinder stuff, yeah. probably up to, up to the rollout of DCC, at least your X-Crawl was in that kind of system. Even like two, two, maybe a year or two beyond um, the, the DCC started coming out, I was still writing and doing all the Pathfinder X-Crawl stuff. So we'll start with you. And then I'm going to ask Dan the same question and, and where he was at at the time. But, you know, for you, what was what was the biggest shift to kind of, lead, you know, get out of that? I don't mean like you had to get out, but, you know, you know, go, I know what you mean. Coming, coming from there and then picking up yeah. a new system. What what did you find challenging? I mean, it's a mindset, you know, to Dungeon Crawl Classics is definitely more of a state of mind. You know, you can run. So I was I was at the time running Pathfinder. It's a pretty regimented system. And it uh, it really is by the numbers. You can just, you know, you can just literally find a rule to cover absolutely, you know, any situation and situations that are not uh, covered by the rules. You can literally just say you can't do that, and that's just the nature of that kind of game, you know. So I think part of it you have to start getting into the the DCC mindset where people can try these incredible, daring, cinematic type things and do these really interesting things but you know that that maybe will work maybe won't work but you know uh but certainly even if they fail will add like flavor to the game so that was a that was a big part of it for me and you know learning the system it's like anything you know i mean i, I made mistakes at first i remember at you know i remember the, the first time I, I ran high level dcc stuff i was giving a uh, halflings uh uh backstabs I, I just don't know why I thought they had that, but it was just a mistake I made, you know? So, mm. I mean, I, I made a lot of mistakes in those early days. I just ran so much that I got to where I was, you know, comfortable with it and better, you know? But, um, you know, I, I think, but that's part of the mindset, though, is moving to a new thing. You know, allow yourself to make those mistakes. Don't stress it. You know what I mean? Go out there, do your best. And when you figure out, oh, I was doing this wrong the whole time, do it, do it, you know, change it up, you know? I mean, you don't, it, there's no demerits. No one's handing out, you know what I mean? you know, black marks for people who don't do it right for a while, you know, 
I mean, let I'll, I'll give yourself the space to learn the new system without stress. Have fun with it. Hey, I like that. I like that very much. I th I think uh, I think there is a transition to kind of fitting your mind into the the rulings, not rules aspect of it. And I love I yeah. love giving halflings back snaps. You're you're really you're kind of inspiring a thought because they can do stealth, right? Why? I mean, you don't have to give them all the thief skills, but maybe just a one, maybe a D16 back, one D16 backstab. I don't want to take from the thief, but you know. No, no. I mean, it, it was, it, you know, it was, uh, you know, it, it was just, it was literally just, I, I just thought it's how it was. You know what I'm saying? I, I just was wrong about how it worked, you know? So, um, but um, you know, I, I've learned to be really free form with it. I've learned to let people try, you know, all, all that stuff. And like, like I said, Pathfinder really was very restrictive. So it's nice to be able to kind of soar, you know, the DCC is so much faster and so much more cinematic and it leads to so much more interesting uh, results time and time again. So once you get into it, it's like, you know, it's did, like, you, did your, uh, did your players, uh, did your players have to break out of the mindset that, that way? Yeah, and some of them never did. Uh, my, you know, or, or, or came to it very, very slowly. You know, I ran, you know, hole in the sky. One of the the reasons behind um, the whole wheel of destiny thing was that uh, after we ran the first BCC I ever ran was uh, sailors in the Starless Sea, and uh, when it was over, my characters level, my guys are leveling up their characters, and he's like, "Hey, um, how do I change my?" Um, my lucky sign slash birth auger. It doesn't make any sense. It's it's spell damage, and that makes no sense for my guy to be a warrior. And I'm like, you kind of can't. It doesn't make any, you know. And he was like mad. He was like, no, that's stupid. I got this thing I can't use, and I got a plus one. And he was real, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things I thought, like, well, what if, why can't that person change their stars, you know? And they can. DCC, what, what, what do we say, Tim? We quest for it, you know? So, uh, right, you know, so um, why not, you know, you know, so I, I kind of I kind of built that quest bit into Hole in the Sky, but I hope everyone built all of those things in their games, you know, a character advancement and like really making those kind of changes to your character that are built in and level based in other games. Just let them let them seek it out. Let them find that knowledge, find those things and do some cool, dangerous crap in order to bump up whatever it is they want to bump up. Judge uh, Judge Daniel. Uh, what what were you doing before you adopted uh, DCC? Judge Daniel may be having some internet issues tonight. Uh, he, oh, he looks, might have frozen. He, he looks like right. he's frozen. Oh, we are having a technical uh, difficulty. Uh, we're having gonna, a technical night, really. Yeah, it's um, a it's a tough one. Well, I'm going to answer for Daniel. Well, Julian, <laughs> I was running. Harsh. I was scaring the bejesus out of people with my Call of Cthulhu games. And uh, I think he was probably, you know, I bet he had a hand in some OSR game. I was running a little bit of swords and wizardry at the time as well. And um, <laughs> yes, and I was making players um, swear off role-playing games by how much I terrified them uh, with my Lovecraftian um, old school judge heroics. Um, okay, well, sorry, Dan. Uh, <laughs> You know the best of the best of uh, the best laid plans is what I'm trying to say. So there are <laughs> there is a publication full of Dan Bishop uh, wisdom. It's called Dispatches of the Raven Crow King. I think some of it is comes from his blog, which is online, and we'll link in our show notes uh, eventually. And also, uh, you can certainly get the collections on Drive Through RPG. And I don't know if they're collected at Goodman Games, but they should be. So anyway, check Goodman Games too. <laughs> but um, that there's all kinds of great wisdom about um, DCC and judging it and what makes DCC great. So if we don't get Daniel back, you can certainly do that. And uh, I could also read it to you. Um, <laughs> I could read them to you. You could um, perhaps... Um, Dan or is Dan back? I don't. I don't know. Dan, I can. Aha! Awesome. There we Dan, go. Sorry, so some I, serious internet problems, but I have tethered myself on. So hopefully, that will uh, provide a solid connection. I I I'm I'm envisioning Dan like 
chained to a bucking like mile long worm on the you know you know if you're a really just... really really mm-hmm. bad patron, go patron. <laughs> so dan the patron what's... of the internet is like screwing with me like you would not believe so what were you what were you oh. running before the advent of the dcc i was running 3.0 for a while mm. as it went into 3.5 and then I got really tired of it and started working on my own system mm. to be more pulp adventure based. And then thankfully, Joseph Goodman came along and did it for me. So it saved <laughs> me a lot of effort, a lot of time. Oh, especially you don't want to deal with those artists directly. I mean, well, well, yeah. With the podcasters. <laughs> ah, I'm playing. Oh, hey, now. Oh, yeah. You know. I mean, so at that playing, point, you know. at that point, I was just looking at what I would like to play for my own purposes, right? Right. And then uh, DCZ came along, and I said, "Aha! I've discovered it." What uh, when you picked it up? What uh, what did you find? You know, what did you have to relearn as part of your transition? So okay. you had a pretty old school yeah, thing, this and then is, you this dipped is, in. This was like way before the rule book came out when they first did the previews for uh free rpg day mm, right and uh the thing that probably took me longest to actually unlearn from 3.5 is that in the old school and in dcc you are not married to the outcome of an encounter in 3.0 pathfinder games like that there is a right way to run an encounter and a wrong way to run the encounter. And there is an expected outcome. DCC, more than any other game in the history of games that I've ever played, you cannot predict the outcome. Not just for the adventure, for the individual encounter. There are a lot of player-facing mechanics that they have the ability to change things on the dime. A lot of spell burn and a good spell check, a good bunch of deed, spending luck, so getting rid of the idea that you care at all how the encounter goes that you are game master rather than the judge was probably the hardest transition got it yes that i i remember an early one i ran where they were in the midst of a climactic kind of boss encounter for that session and somebody invoked Sezrakon and teleported themselves like 500 miles away from, they just teleported their entire party. And, you know, I didn't have anything prepared or Mm -hmm. anything. And you just, you just, you don't, you, you could be tempted to nerf it or whatever, but you say, yeah, you know, actually I'm going to go with the game. I'm going to, I'm going to go with it and we're going to do it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to see where it takes us. I'm just going to say, okay, you're in a different place. When we start next time, you're going to have, it takes you places you did not expect. Absolutely. And it's a surprise. It's a surprise for the judge as much as the players, right? Yes. And and I, I, I love that. That is the best feeling when your players and go back to Holmes, basic AD and D. That was a regular thing. I mean, not as much, but a regular thing that your players surprised you. And mm. it is really nice. It's coming home. Mm. Mm. It's yeah. like coming home. What did you have any struggles? Did you have any uh, challenges with your, you know, kind of breaking your players out of more of a 3X Pathfinder mindset or older mindsets and getting back into that? Uh, no. I had some difficulty with breaking them out of the fantasy heartbreaker I was working on. Interesting. Uh, Because I devised a combat system that was clearly superior to 3.0. And it gave a lot of choices to the players over the course of a uh, combat that you know, I can hack into DCC if I want. I don't think you need it. Hmm. But it's easy enough to hack back in if you want. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, yeah. Basically, characters had skill ranks and various combat skills. And depending upon how you chose your ranks, your bonuses for defense or offense or damage changed. Hmm, hmm. Hmm. Huh, I like it. I like it. What do you think? 
Brendan was letting people was letting halflings backstab people in their early days. You were you up pro or or con on half halflings backstabbing? <laughs> halflings don't need to backstab. No, that's just how I thought it worked. Uh, so my halfling player right now is the mastermind of the party. So so that was a really good um, segue because in fact, um, in the from the catacombs, the email zombie has actually um, passed me a, a a message that one of the emails oh. asks people what their um, com what their GMing mistakes were in the early days. So and now we have halfling backstab. So that's I don't know if it's a mistake. I kind of like it, but anyway, did you Dan? What uh, did you make mistakes in the early days? Did you, was there one rule you got that is notable that you fudged in the early days? Oh, no, no, like rules, not so much, but that uptight 3.0 day, this encounter should work in this way. Letting go was hard. Rules, mm. if I was making major rule mistakes, I probably still am. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Uh, I, I will say when I when I started and I was running sailors, I think the first two or three times, at least the first two times I ran it, and it was as a funnel, of course, I didn't get the fumble rules and I was just rolling like a D30 on the fumble, whatever you the max rolls you can do on the fumble table. So and then you had, you know, like 20 wow. zeros. And so there was at one point they kept getting, you know, <laughs> you know how they pass around weapons when they die. They get, there was a sling that they kept using and like three of them fumbled and killed themselves with it because they were rolling, you know, 15s and 20s on the fumbled table. And uh, anyway, it was became that the sling. That does not surprise me. Yeah, right. It was the sling of doom, right? It, it acquired some notoriety because uh, because they were, you know, because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. But, you know, we got over that and I reread the rules. It's probably some, probably Tim Mulry or somebody corrected me and that was that. So, um, very good. Uh, so, but the important rule is he judges all his right. So, Dan, how you're do you, actually correct. How do you do your mighty deeds? Are you a are you a written table deeds or abstract or a hybrid? Hybrid. Um, tell me about it. Okay, so this actual last game, I handed my players their very own copy of Marzio Musketeers, uh, Steel and Fury. Right. Uh, and they were having a lot of fun with that. I had been going seat of the pants feeds for a very long time. And my halfling player decided to actually read the rules. Hmm. I started going, you can do this, you can do this. And started advising the warriors about what deeds they might consider doing. So if they're advising because they're trying to get something off of a particular chart, let them use the chart. But the charts are only suggestions and for God's sakes, do not be bound only by what is in that chart. Mm -hmm. Oh, especially like can, when it comes to something like Mighty Deeds, right? Yeah, you if you can think of something expand. cool, if you can think of something cool and there's no chart for it, so what? Do it. <laughs> the son of the man, he knows what he's, knows what he's talking about. Brendan, I think, I mean, I've, I've gamed with you enough that I think you're pretty free form on your deeds. Yes. Um, the, the only one now I look at because it comes up so much is uh, blinding. I use the one in the book for that one. Uh, uh, I guess I got to kind of memorize because everyone's like, well, how come he's not permanently blind? Uh, so I right, go, well, look right. in the book. He'll yeah. ask for, you know. That's, that's, um, yeah, exactly. And yeah. somebody's always like, well, I, I decapitate. And I'm like, okay, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, There's a, a couple of things that I've, I've never used the charts in the book for, and um, with, with the exception of the blinding one, um, Mighty Deeds is one of them. Very good. What about what about patrons? Because and I'll and I'll say along. I think it was at Origins. I was in a Brendan LaSalle game a long time ago, and somebody cast invoke patron and i'd never really seen this before but brendan's like well the king of elfland comes up and he puts his arm around your shoulder and he says walk over here with me and then the king of elfland take takes the pc over there and then they had it well what are you trying to do right now and then and then and they're like i really uh i know you've stopped time and stuff but i'd really like it if this wyvern with the 
the elf in its mouth would actually, you know, um, puke it up again or some <laughs> save the life of our cleric or whatever it was. And but anyway, there was a negotiation. And then it wasn't that easy. Like then there was a negotiation. Well, how about if I, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it was uh, and it was a really interesting thing because I'd always played that strictly, you know, just roll on the chart. Da, da, da. You want to you don't like what you got. Spend some luck, you know, whatever. But I think it makes a lot of sense with your patron to be like, oh, you know, hey, uh, well, you can attack it again and it'll give you a, you know, plus two dice. And um, and if you want more than that, what are you doing for me? You know, let's let's negotiate. You're going to take your buddies down and uh, blow up the quick trip that keeps selling me bad uh, slurpees, oh, you know. Yeah, and then, you know, that kind of stuff, right? So If you personify it, it means they're actually going to use the patron more. Yep. Uh, Dan, if how you do you... Do you get free form with your patrons or how do you do that? Uh, for the most part, I make use of the chart. And that is largely because my players know what is on that chart. Mm -hmm. And they are really hoping to king of elf, king of blend again, right? In this particular group. And they are really hoping for very specific things. Uh, the converse to that, of course, is that every time you cast a both patron or a patron spell, you owe your patron a favor. And patrons do call in those markers. And if it is a convention game and you've invoked patron, I will call in that marker that game. Mm. Mm. Awesome. That makes perfect sense, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's really I good. love it. That like, is literally your character now has a secondary mission in the adventure. And it might not be the same as the rest. Like, yeah. these characters are all trying to stop this bad thing. But your patron says, no, actually, you're allowed to do this far, but no farther. And I want that ending at the end. That, see, that was just a nugget right there that I never, you know, like every con game, if you invoke patron, yes, all the likes, the follows, and the insta prints right on that one. That was <laughs> awesome. That, yes plus a million all right um yeah we're gonna have to move it on because uh, there's a restless email zombie out there and then we want to talk to uh, some other judges too um but this has been um this has been a good conversation guys leave me with a final nugget of wisdom please you know uh because we've i've tried to ask you some good interview questions but there's probably something you remember from your journey that i didn't ask you so what the heck would that be? What's the best advice you could give somebody who's like, I want to run DCC. I love this game. I know my players will love it. Uh, but what's the one thing they didn't think of yet or that you can send them away with uh, to help them along? Jump in there. Just, just do it. Honestly, the game at zero level is going to solve itself for you completely. As the players learn, you will learn. Just go for it very nice how about you would say uh gosh like I'm, I'm you know brain flooding um i would say that uh you know don't ever feel like limited by anything in the book including the the advice that we give or the, the free advice that they give there run your game your way um let it be open and let fun be the highest law at the table you know like like let it let let everything bow down in the service of a good time that session hmm. Hmm. can i add one other thing yeah if you really really want to have a master class in running the game and you go to any convention whatsoever and there is a brendan the cell game in that convention go and play in the brendan the cell game Mm -hmm. yeah i have played in several and they're always great thank I, you I, but but to really run like brendan you're gonna have to also kind of bring that energy Drink red bull i don't know right so i'm gonna say like so first learn from the master then drink a <laughs> case of mountain dew eat about 40 twinkies i don't drink soda just, or twinkies oh come on now well i don't, <laughs> you I don't know. know i got you, you know you, you really, you, me, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You know what you really want to do? Go to the, like, if you're at a convention, like exercise, like 15 minutes before your first game, like oh. really get your blood up. That's what I do. Oh. That's the, oh. that's the secret. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, GM tips. You heard it here. This is why you listen to Spellburn. Cause we know what we're talking about <laughs> with our finger and our cameras. <laughs> 
All right. Um, wow. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm going to inflict you know what upon our viewers and listeners. Um, so we'll be right back. It's me. Yes, the email zombie. Cursed forever with the eternal torment of reading old emails written long ago to spell burn, including Jeff Gold. Well, I guess that's just my lot in my own life. So here we go. It's really nice how these all have to do with judging tonight. So I've been helping out our hosts and passing them some notes. But I want to say, first of all, all these other monsters, these cyclopses and pyramid demons from the Starless Sea, and worst of all, this magician skull, they got nothing on me and the real thing. So remember the emails, I'll be accepting no substitutes. Okay. Uh, here we go. Harvey. Harvey Gillette, I think. Uh, he says something about how to say that. Uh, hi, hi, Harvey. I don't know. Hello, judges. I only eventually started listening to the show and am many episodes away from catching up. Well, you've had a long time now, Harvey, because this email is like two years old. <laughs> it has been insightful so far. I got into DCC thanks to Appendix and Book Club podcast. Well, never heard of it. And learned about Spellburn along the way. Both shows have helped motivate me. I've learned so much from Spellburn and have realized my own feelings as a judge from the first funnel I ran. What were some of the common mistakes you made as judges when you ran your first session? And how did you overcome them? Oh, well, keep up the awesome work from Harvey Gillette. Yes, well, uh, you know, when I first ran DCC for the ghouls and the, the whites down here in the basement around the crypt table, we were using a long sarcophagus as our table, and we were rolling the bone dice. You know, I, I was originally confused. One of the great things about DCC they don't just label the monsters on the turning table with the with the zombies like the second easiest to turn. They just do it by hit dice. That's a great improvement. I did instinctively revert once or twice, but then I remembered zombies have the most hit dice. Harvey, that's all you need to know. Next email, Judge Christian. Hey, all judges, Jay, I have a question about running road crew games. I have run more than ever being online this past year during pandemic. One thing I have come across that I had a tough time with was disruptive players. Sometimes people are disruptive and don't know it. Sometimes it may be related to a personality issue or a disability. During the past year, it may have been related to a technical issue. I want to empathize with people and may need a little more understanding, but I also want to give every player at the table an opportunity to shine. Ah, yeah, not so much with the light. I think sometimes it is unfair to other players if someone is extremely disruptive and the judge doesn't do anything about it. But I don't know how to deal with it in a graceful and understanding manner. Do you have any tips or tools for a road crew judge? Christian, Judge Christian, listen closely to the email zombie. The best method for disruptive players. Eat them. <laughs> Alana, lady, get out of my basement. Go away. All right, we're back. Thank what goodness. Is, we're back. Uh, that was that was terrifying. Who keeps letting <laughs> that guy in? I mean, even even with all this bling, yo, I I'm totally I get my wards keep failing. I I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, people. 
Haley, I'm sorry you had to see that. It's okay. Name. It's, you know, I'll be okay. It might take me a minute to focus up again, but I'll okay. get through it. All right, good. So, um, you know, I wanted to vary things up because along with uh, new folks coming into DCC, along with judges who have done some other stuff uh, before, like maybe many years of running old school games and or Pathfinder, there are also folks who might pick up DCC and not have run a bunch of old games in the past. And, you know, they're coming in as like, what the heck is this game? What is it? How do I do it? How do I, what does running it mean? And, and, and all those questions. And how did they fit so much art in this book? And all those <laughs> questions. So, um, Jen, I think, you know, you had been around the game, you know, gaming people and some, and probably played some before that. I don't even know how much, but I think DCC was the first game you actually ran, if I recall correctly. Correct. After nearly 20 years of playing various games. However, and, yes, yeah, our, yeah. Our, our our lovely now uh, guest, uh, many people know her from, well, uh, running her very first tournament when she was 14. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, so, wouldn't recommend a whole tournament out the gate. Well... <laughs> Well, you, you rocked it. And uh, so, so, you know, that's a really different experience. So um, Haley, I'm going to let you go first. You, you know, at some point you'd, you'd seen the book, you played the game at that point, but you, at some point you're sitting down to run your first game. You know, how did you approach that? And what were you thinking as you went through that? Um, so it started when I played Carnival of the Dam by David Beatty. Amazing, mm. amazing game. I was like, you know what? I think I can do this. This is the one I think I can do because it was designed to pull encounters and set up kind of your own adventure. So I could pull the ones I felt strongest with and just do those ones. Hmm. Um, it was also a tournament, so I didn't have to be worried that people were going to die and then it was going to be a whole thing. Uh, the other thing was my wonderful, wonderful parents um, supported me through, they got me props, They got which by the way, um, send some love to my dad. He finally decided to be positive about something. It just happened to be COVID. So oh. let's send oh, some no. love that way. <laughs> um, but they got me props. They made sure I, they printed out rainbow colored character sheets. You know, they really had my back through the whole thing um, of whatever I needed. I, family friends were making me posters to put up. Like the support around me really is what I think kind of jumped me into it and then I had been playing since I was nine at that point so it was five years of experience um I didn't know the rules I didn't <laughs> I still I'm not gonna lie to you guys I still really if you asked me to quote a rule couldn't I <laughs> you play by the seat of your pants and I think that's what makes it more can, fun can halflings backstab <laughs> I said in the chat dual backstab sounds like fun hey, <laughs> all right all right hey uh Jen yeah. Uh, tell me about the beginning of your journey there. Uh, um, you really want this all over again? Um, <laughs> just the be very, just the beginning part. The beginning part, like the first time I ran, or yeah. Um, I put my hat in the ring for some sort of game day that was being held locally, and said, "Fine, I'll I'll run a table." And I picked the one adventure that I had actually already played, hmm. which was, oh, shoot, uh, The Undulating Corruption, because it was hmm. from uh, Free RPG Day 2012, right? Yep. And I really wasn't sure. And I got a couple of people that were like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Is this like Pathfinder? <laughs> uh, and thank God, oh one of our friends that used to host a game at his house all the time uh he came down from oh geez like mid-state florida and he was absolutely into it and he took the caster and i went oh crap and it didn't matter that i was fumbling he was still making the most of it and I think he was probably the one thing that kept me from just throwing the towel in and saying, well, that sucked. Let's try something else. Hmm. So it, 
it was a little dicey at first. No, no pun intended, I swear. Um, <laughs> I, I at least knew my dice by that point, but now it was, it was uncomfortable. I have to say hmm. like the first few times, especially because nobody down here. Yeah. Let's just say I have a different chromosome than most of the players in this area. Right. Yeah. And the fact that I'm also probably twice their age that's a deterrent or if i am their age they're so stuck in that mentality of being the forever gm that nobody else is going to run a good good enough game for them so thankfully we were introduced to the con scene and gary con and then all the other conventions uh, that aren't gen con because boy that took forever to actually run for gen con uh but it it was it i mean even now it can still be a, a trial i can say hey i'm running this game over to our flgs and there will be no shows mm, and yeah, yeah. you just roll with it say yeah i i did my part i entered it on the uh, events calendar for goodman games so i got my swag and i guess i'll give it to people who appreciate it at the next convention <laughs> and uh i i still get my credit i showed up and I came and and tried to make the most of it and still game with friends. I, I I think I think we can all say there are times when you just don't have the best you have not run the best game of your life. And uh, sometimes the dice do it to you. Sometimes the players do it to you. Sometimes it's just not the best game of your life. And, you know, after you've run like hundreds, you just go, eh. You know that was that. You know it's like being uh, it's like being an athlete. Like, well, we got our butts kicked. Now we just gotta tomorrow. We gotta go out and play again. Yep. You know, like you dust off the dice, do it again. Yep. Because I've, you could have the best one tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I've had bad days as a player. You know, I don't play my best in mm. games. I don't always run my best games. You know, every mm. day is not going to be a win. That's fair okay. enough. So, do you guys have any? Uh, you know, Alana is telling me something. There was a question about disruptive players. Uh, uh, in the email uh, portion, do you guys have, uh, Jen, do you have any uh, insight? Oh, I'm gonna let Haley take this one. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I did see- uh, No, not like, counting your dad, not counting your dad. <laughs> yeah, I just throw things at him, that one's easy. Um, you know, Michael Curtis seemed to have a good answer. Violence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> wait, we don't condone violence? I might need to, um, no, I saw Michael Curtis have a great suggestion of kill them. You know, that's a, an option. Um, I, you know, I study psychology in school, so I tend to take the approach of these people are seeking attention, don't give in to it, you back off, you focus on other players, even if it's to the point where you kind of have to have selective hearing sometimes, and then when it's their turn, to me it's like uh, when you play with kids and you're trying to somehow in little ways teach them uh, table manners here and there, you know, when they're real little and they don't quite understand, um, it's kind of like that and you have to have that selective hearing and then when it's their turn, oh, it's your turn in initiative, now what would you like to do? I think that kind of not feeding into their attention, they either A, realize they're being disruptive, which is, you know, you can make a comment here or there of like, okay, and since it is so-and-so's turn and you just kind of highlight that, um, they yeah. either realize they're being disruptive or aren't getting the attention they need and kind of draw back a little bit that's my best advice just selective um, hearing works the for, wonders <laughs> for online games um if you're running through discord um as the person running the event you might actually have the ability to mute other players same with the zoom hmm. um just throwing that out there physical selective hearing <laughs> <laughs> right right actually um, in practice <laughs> yes another thing that i like to do uh using using zoom is really helpful for many reasons for online games and one is that you can actually send messages directly to other people and instead of saying dude stfu um i will go with i prefer all of my players to receive equal screen time and that is usually all it takes is once to the really disruptive person and you can see them kind of recoil and they keep their trap shut for a while until it's their turn. And I mean, if that were me, I'd rather someone say it up front once than 
me continue to be a disruptive player. You know, like I, I don't know how if other people feel the same way, but I'd rather be called out once and then learn than continue to be a problem for others. Mm-hmm. But a, I, I'm a very big fan of not disciplining people um, publicly. Yes. Yeah, call it yeah. call it a managerial trait. Ding. That's. But uh, <laughs> I another would to talk to somebody privately versus. All right, guys, and who screwed up this time and why? No, that that's just never going to go over well. That's yep. That's another beautiful thing of the online things is you can private message mm-hmm. people and do the little, hey. But yeah. I, but I I always do it wrong. I always go if it's like to you know, Bob. It's always I always do it to everyone, and if it <laughs> should be to everyone, or if it should be to you know, Bill, then I do it to Andre or what it's like, I always, I always expose. Sounds this like user life. error. <laughs> yeah. We have this I'm... great person named Stephen Newton, one of our other authors in, in the fold. Uh, he, he can help you with your Zoom issues. <laughs> uh, it's really, it's, uh, yeah, there's uh, maybe an attention problem. And You're going to end up with a personalized Zoom that's just big buttons that mute people. The big, the bigger. The I'm buttons, okay with that. <laughs> the bigger the buttons, the better. Okay. But no, I, I also like even on a Zoom basis. If you're if you're running something that you're passionate about, it will show, and uh, you can tell on screen if people are looking down at their phones. You can see lighting change, especially if they're wearing glasses, like when they pop over to their Facebook window or something um usually you can keep them engaged and i'm really grateful for that over the past three years well i love i love your advice for newbies pick an adventure you love uh you know something you've played is also a really good idea i heard carnival of the dam i highly recommend yeah and um, (laughs) the uh sorry i know that adventure but what's the name again jen um the uh, oh the undulating question. yeah the undulating yeah. which is also a great quest for an adventure if you're trying to yeah. if your wizard's trying to get rid of a corruption right as a caveat i think it starts at like i think it's fourth level if not fifth so it is a higher level versus a funnel but mm. for me that was perfect to get new players involved and show them you know, the glorious things that these classes can do in DCC. Awesome. Uh, really important question, Jen. Shadows, uh, excuse me, um, halflings backstab. What do you, uh, uh, uh? Um, give me a roll and make it really <laughs> sexy. Ah, like exactly, that. Jen, really exactly. exactly. <laughs> Maybe pour some halfling luck on there while you're at it type thing. I mean, if we're talking fleeting luck and Lankmar, I, because I know literary like more, you shouldn't have halflings, but I'm a huge fan of fleeting luck anywhere. Um, we we can talk, yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So I ran a City of the Dam campaign for three years, and my only judge advice is: don't do halflings, clerics, and fleeting luck at the same time. At least not without some interesting <laughs> house rules. Right. The bless will. Yeah. Anyway, enough said. <laughs> I get you. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Do you guys, do you have any, uh, we're going to wrap it up here uh, eventually here, but um, do you guys have any, give me, each of you give me a mm-hmm. nugget of wisdom. Go back in time to the Haley of old and the Jen <laughs> of old. And, and what would you Older. tell, <laughs> what would you tell yourself if you could just whisper in that person's ear before their first game? Um, just do it. Your players aren't going to lynch you for it. You know, if you mess up, okay, roll with it. Uh, it's not world ending at the end. I like, I have horrible social anxiety, but what I learned is no one cares if you mess up one rule, if you fudge this, if that happens, like no one's going to be like, this game was awful because she didn't remember the exact ruling for when this weird situation comes. No one's going to do that. They're there to have fun. As long as you're having a good time and they're having a good time, who cares? 
who cares? Normally, normally I would totally be on board with that, but your father made my very first con game less than I don't speak for him. (laughs) I don't (laughs) speak for him. (laughs) Everything I was running was playtests for other authors. So it was very concerning to me if something was wrong. Yes. Um, I would say now go through it like you want to run this yourself not because you're nitpicking every little thing for the authors even if you're playtesting something for them Mm. run it like you normally would because that's how it's normally going to be run if someone throws you for a curveball lean into it go with it um the other last thing i would like to point out is that the uh war of the cyclops con is coming up may 6th and 7th so anybody who hasn't played and is very curious about DCC. It's an online con, so there's the only obligation is a couple hours of your time. Sign up to play some events. Absolutely. I'm running a funnel online, which, of course, I said I would not do again. <laughs> so that's, why, that's why I'm doing it. Yes. So, um, exactly. No, that'll be fun. There's going to be a lot of fun games. There's a lot of... Uh, all kinds of people from the community, you know, old and new and everything. And that should be a great place and a great opportunity to run your first game. You can also run a game for two hours, you know, feeling, right. feeling a little uneasy, run a game for two hours and, you know, take, uh, you know, one of the shorter free RPG day adventures and, and go with one of those. Uh, it's pretty easy. And don't forget the demo nights every week, Brendan and co run those and those are completely free no obligation except to show up and get a feel for the game yeah yeah perfect uh good good reminder so um so i want to just uh go with a couple um things at the very end here uh yes we had an issue with the last the last episode it appears that cesricon dipped into the phlogiston um, and uh, stole it. So stop the steal. Um, if anybody has that actual like file somewhere, somehow, I don't know how you would have done that, but people surprise me sometimes. Players surprise you. So if anybody has that episode somehow available, hey, give me a call um, and uh, let us know and we'll, uh, m- we could make it available. But otherwise, um, yeah, if you saw that episode on Twitch, you are one of the true faithful who will have a spellburn experience nobody will ever have. It's kind of cool when you think of it. We Sadly. should make an NFT or something. And anyway, <laughs> um, but uh, so we're going to skip that one in the annals of podcasting. When we post this, it'll not miss a number or anything like that. Um, mm. Lastly, I want to send uh, love out to Jim Sketch if he's not feeling good. Uh, hey, we hope you're feeling better. And also the evil vegan himself the the devil known as Hobbs um, had, did missed Gary Khan with a broken ankle. So uh, also um, on the one hand, I was kind of glad that you weren't there, but I still feel bad for you. And I, I hate admitting that. So dude, that um, would have sucked trying to get around that place with broken. No, yeah, too many stairs, right? right? Upstairs to go downstairs to go upstairs to go downstairs to end up exactly where you started. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and not to mention them stepping on your foot constantly and all that. It's my stuff. favorite. <laughs> so. Nothing better. All right. Um, <laughs> hey, thanks guys for a great show. Thank you to Brendan and Judge Daniel. Uh, thank you to Judge Jen, Judge Haley. Thank you so much to Alana. No thanks to the undash dead stewing in their basements. Um, but thanks everybody for listening and watching. And we will see you uh, hopefully in about a month. So game on. <laughs>